So when we salt out, we don't typically, uh, we're not typically able to isolate the protein completely. It's still a little dirty. So we need other methods in order to really purify the protein. So one typically used is called chromatography. And you may recognize this uh, from earlier courses, such as organic uh, chemistry or organic lab, uh, where you're able to separate out molecules based on their physical properties. So we can do a similar thing with proteins. So in chromatography, we have a column that we pack with beads, or what we call resin. And so this is sort of a solid support for functional groups. So sometimes we can add charge functional groups to this or hydrophobic functional groups. Depends on what we're trying to separate. All right. And so this is a solid support that we call the stationary phase. Okay. And then we can load our protein or our cell lysate or whatever we have onto this and pass it through. And this is in solution. So uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that the stationary phase is in some sort of solution. So it's basically, uh, you know, a very concentrated suspension almost uh, because running through in between all these beads is some sort, uh, generally of some sort of water-based solution that's called the mobile phase. Okay, because this will pass through the beads and then eventually go out of the column. Okay, so we can pass our protein through and then some proteins will stick. Uh, one, one way to think of this is that proteins will stick to the stationary phase or maybe the, uh, or in some chromatographies, simply what happens is that the stationary phase causes some proteins to move slower than others, okay? And so what we eventually are looking for is uh, through the interactions of proteins uh, with the mobile, with the, excuse me, with the stationary phase, we can separate out proteins. So for instance, uh, in this slide on the right, we see our loaded sample goes through uh, we add mobile phase to help push the sample through. And then things that interact very weakly with the beads are going to progress through the column much faster uh, than things that act really strongly with the beads. And so that means uh, by, uh, by the speed of the mobility uh, of, the, of the proteins, uh, one will elute faster and we can collect it. And then we end up with our fractions. And we can separate, for instance, um, two proteins from each other. Okay. And then we can follow this by UV vis absorption. So remember, most proteins absorb at 280 nanometers. So if we read the absorbance at 280 nanometers, whatever is coming out. Uh, whatever is being uh, eluded out of the column, we get traces. So, so different proteins will come out at different times. Can you see that? You can't see that. So the x-axis is time. Okay, that increasing time. And so we can see uh, what proteins are eluding at what times uh, as, uh, as they come off the column. And so this is called a chromatogram. And this helps us determine how well we're able to separate proteins from each other.